to Rising. We have a great show for you today. Brianna, it's so nice to see you on a Monday. I love being here with you on Monday, Robbie. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> What genuine enthusiasm. It's terrific. No, you know I love my long weekends, but it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to fill and in And we color can. coordinated. And we color coordinated. We're off to a good start. All right. <laughs> what is going on today? Uh, well, first up, uh, Twitter CEO Elon Musk sat down for an exclusive interview with Fox News' Tucker Carlson, airing tonight and tomorrow night. In a teaser for the sit-down, Musk dropped this bombshell about the federal government's access to Twitter data. The degree to which uh, various government agencies had effectively had full access to everything that was going on on Twitter uh, blew my mind. Um, I was not aware of that. Would that include people's DMs? Uh, yes. The chief twit also issued a stark warning about artificial intelligence. AI is more dangerous than, say, mismanaged uh, aircraft design or production maintenance or, or, or b bad car production uh, in the sense that it is, it has the potential, uh, however small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. Now, part one of the interview will air at 8 p.m. tonight. Then I believe there's going to be another episode a uh, day after. Uh, I'll be watching. Uh, should be fascinating to see them talk through some of these things, um, first relating to the Twitter files and all that. So, so Musk suggesting that there was access, the government got access to DMs as well, which is something I believe social media companies have denied. Uh, in fact, I, I believe denied in front of Congress when, mm -hmm. when hauled there. I believe the, the Zuckerbergs and Dorseys of the world said something to the effect of the DMs are not being. Um, so now, so we'll have to know, is that share, is that routine? Like, um, like, I'm not even sure it, w it was established that content moderators are supposedly are getting access to that. It's supposed to be super duper private, like not even Twitter looking at them necessarily. So is it the case that, you know, senior Twitter moderator people can just automatically have access to that very easily? Is it the case that they're sharing all of that with law enforcement or does law enforcement make a request? Mm -hmm. they Obviously, if there's part of a... If it's part of a, like a criminal proceeding, you know, we've seen uh, you, maybe you can make a, if there's a warrant or something, they're going to cooperate. Yeah. But just but that's not what, we, you know, in the Twitter files, what we're seeing is like someone at the FBI says, hey, we don't like this piece of content. So are they just asking in an informal sense, in, in an informal sense, and then getting access to that? That would be a massive scandal. That would be yes. that. I mean, that itself would be. <laughs> sort of would, would be, I mean, it would be violating users' trust on such a level. I'd wonder if it was criminal to, to do that yes, with I, users' information I and really data. I really hope that the specifics are laid out and that Tucker Carlson asked some important follow-ups mm -hmm. in that issue. Because we saw something similar emerge in the Facebook case, right, where Facebook was is wanting to move to end-to-end uh, move everybody over to Messenger as a default, right? Because that, that has that end-to-end -end encryption right. where Facebook can say, well, I never had access to the messages as right. well, so that when law enforcement comes around and asks for documents or asks for information, they can realistically, plausibly say, I couldn't turn it over even if I wanted to. And then the organization doesn't have to weigh in on things like, well, should I be providing the law enforcement with information about somebody's menstrual cycle or whether they ordered this kind of abortifacant mm -hmm. or whatever as these culture wars ensue. It seems to be the case, based on that brief statement, that something is going on at Twitter which would implicate its uh, kind of uh, complicit, complicity with, with law enforcement that may or may not look good on the company, mm -hmm. depending on where the culture war winds are blowing at any given moment. It'll also be interesting to see how he handles the question of the Twitter files, which have been, in so many ways, the defining move of his ownership of Twitter. Without a doubt. And, you know, which I think so many of us have invested in, despite our criticisms, or I'll speak for myself, some of my criticisms of Elon Musk and his labor practices, how he treated his own workforce, et cetera, the fact of exposing the unholy relationship between the government and these social media companies, I think is a genuinely important adventure. But what we heard last week during that um, Twitter spaces conversation with the BBC journalist was that it seems like Elon Musk is largely over the Twitter files. He said everything has to end at some point. And there is 
some confusion about whether or not his choice to basically ramp down the project is a consequence of his kind of personal falling out with Matt Taibbi and potentially some of the other uh, Twitter Files authors, or whether it's one that's really rooted in principle and a belief that there's nothing left to see here. Now, how you can say, make a re revelation like the government was in your DMs, but also, ah, eh, the Twitter file should basically be ramped down. I don't know how you square those two. Yeah, it doesn't sound like we're coming to the end of this project naturally. It sounds like there's a lot a lot more that we would, we ought to know, we would like to know. And I, I think it's very unfortunate that Elon doesn't seem to want to work with Matt Taibbi anymore. Um, I, I think they should fix, they should repair that. But if not, you can find someone else to continue looking at these things because this was, the promise you made is for greater transparency and it would seem like there's a lot more to look at. I want to ask exactly the question, you raised this uh, before we started rolling. This is what I would want to ask Elon. What is going on now? Does the, is the government still routinely flagging content for Twitter moderators? Mm -hmm. what, are you, what is your approach when they say, hey, we, we think you know, there's Russian misinformation all over the place here, or you know, COVID misinformation or something. What are you doing? What are you saying back to them? What have you told your people? Because yes. Elon's probably not messaging with them directly. It wasn't, these people weren't messaging Dorsey or, or, uh, or et cetera. They were, they right. were messaging you know, the content moderators, right. the senior uh, officials. So what have you told those people to, to say and to do, you know, have you have you told them to respond with like poop emojis or something, which is yes. Elon's l level of seriousness I mean, we have sometimes. That that's been the case. Yeah. That, that's been the default um, auto generated reply to people who've been making certain kinds of inquiries yeah. about malfunctions with their account being locked out to people who are potentially making more serious government style inquiries. But some folks have argued, you know, the way that he seems to have kind of discarded a uh, the Twitter Files Project in Matt Taibbi, based on just the comments from that uh, Twitter uh, live conversation, Twitter Spaces conversation, suggests that maybe the project here was more about, you know, cleansing the timeline, as it were, uh, putting some distance between new Twitter and old Twitter uh, by really um, being clear about the malfeasance that happened at old Twitter in a way that kind of distracts Mm -hmm. from any questions about what is currently going on at new Twitter. And it would be such a shame, because I do think the project is substantively useful, but it would be such a shame if ultimately Taibbi was, uh, sorry, um, Taibbi was being exploited by Musk to basically launder or create the presumption that there have been improvements when the reality is Taibbi wasn't it was given access to these older files during the, the previous era, but there's been very little interrogation of the standards that are being set under new Twitter. And what we know, by the way, is that there have been some very capricious decisions that have been made about banning journalists who were reporting on the Elon Musk account, um, the decision to ban and then bring back and then ban Kanye mm -hmm. that weren't based on any generally articulated, articulated principle, but seemingly on Elon Musk's personal whims. Before we go, what do you make of the comments about AI? I'm sure that's going to be a fascinating discussion. I, for my part, I don't want to be, I, I never want to be tech phobic. I, I never want to say, you know, because people have warned about every new sure. innovation in, in, especially in the communications space and said this is going to be the end of humanity and instead they mostly, we work out the kinks and it's it's a good thing that we have sure. the radio, that then we had TV, that now we have the internet. Twitter, so, <laughs> I love Twitter. Right, so I'm, I'm just, I'm not tech phobic at all. That said, I'm a fan of science fiction. I've read all the books. I've seen all the movies where the <laughs> machines take over and kill everyone. Yeah. Uh, where, where are you at on the on the fear the machines, aid the machines uh, spectrum? Well, I'm a sci-fi utopian kind of a gal. Right, um, you're Star Trek. Star That's your Trek. nerd entry point. Yeah, so short of the Borg, Star yeah, Trek has the Borg a pretty uh, positive view of technology and what it can do. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear what he has to say. It does, when, when you hear statements like that mm -hmm. about specifics, and I know it's just a clip from an interview, so it's not his fault necessarily that there's not more specifics there. Um, it can serve the purpose of fear mongering in a way that I'm a little bit distrustful of. Um, I look, I see those dogs, those, um, yeah, you uh, don't like the dynamic, robot dogs. Uh, yeah. Those, uh, masters and dynamic, what is the company called? I want to say it's massive dynamic, Ma but that's the fake company <laughs> from fringe. Um, whatever the, you know, the, the, yeah. the robot dogs that are like, they They're like put MIT guns on them and they can open doors and they were famously kind of parodied in black mirror. And right. it, 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 that sort of thing I think is very 
scary. Yeah. Um, the, the increased weaponization and militarization of our police force, the surveillance technology, the merging of the Amazon rings with police technology and what that means for the surveillance state, I'm very concerned about that. Mm -hmm. But it, I'm, I'm interested to see what Elon Musk is actually talking yeah, about. Yeah, there's been so much panic right now about the chat uh, GBT. GBT thing. It was so many, even like mainstream people writing about tech with this in these apocalyptic tones saying, oh, it, it, it learned how you could like kidnap a child or something. <laughs> well, you fed it really specific prompts to get it to that sure. point. It's, uh, they've been hysterical with that kind of stuff. So I, sure. I tend to lump this into that same category, but. Uh, the but only people who should know. be really terrified of chat P uh, GPT are uh, high school English teachers who are really struggling right now. Because <laughs> all, well, all their kids are gonna. The cheating, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cheating yeah. seems like it's gonna get worse. <laughs> um, okay, maybe no ro robot dogs coming for us yet. Uh, up next, I'll tell you what's on my radar. Stick around for that. <laughs> 